to another episode of Fraser Lee Verbocious. I'm Chris. And I'm Alan. And how are you, Alan? Pretty good, even though it's plopping it down in the Irish countryside. You define plopping it down for our non-Irish listeners. Heavy, miserable, foggy rain. <laughs> oh, it's lovely weather here in the south of England. <laughs> Although, I have to say, I'm already missing Spain. I've only been away for three, no, two weeks. Yeah, one week here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, on the menu this evening, we're recording in the evening, uh, for once, um, Summer CPD. Yeah, so... Can we have a break in the summer, Alan? What? Can we not have a break during the summer? You mean have a break in the summer? What? Yeah, yeah during the holidays. Uh, well, I, 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 I suppose the, the week that I've just had off has been my summer of reading a thing called fiction again, which is quite nice. I uh, know. So the idea was that we would do a podcast on uh, summer CPD as, um, as you know, teachers never stop, do they? Um, or are they allowed to? I've heard, I've heard tell of a teacher taking the occasional afternoon off here and there. It's, yeah, the it's the occasional thing. afternoon, yeah. So what is your take on, or what uh, do you like doing in the summer to keep, when you're not in the classroom? I know you're on a summer course, but when you're not in the classroom? Um, <laughs> that's actually, there's no answer to that, mate, because literally it's all I do. Um, I think the, I think, uh, I'm either in the classroom in the summer or I am on a holiday. Um, although I think the point of um, doing a summer course, um, I usually have a different role in the summer, um, which is a great opportunity to get a different perspective on the same um day-to-day operation, I mean, it might be, it's always more intense during the summer in a summer school than it is perhaps in your day-to-day term round position, but a different perspective um, can always be useful because there are other roles you can do. I know uh, people with CELTA um, who will do things like being a house parent or will do activity leader uh, roles at summer camps because they want to kind of engage with, with the young people in a different way. Um, I'm sure they can take back things to their classrooms. Um, even if they're not in the teaching role. Um, it's also an opportunity for people who maybe want to step upwards into management to take roles like, or apply to roles like senior teacher, um, and develop their skills in, in managing others. Yeah, um, today for example I was in, um, I do a lot of volunteer work with the Belfast Unemployed Resource Centre, um, and we are basically looking for any and all projects that we can do to get uh, refugees involved in local communities as well um so it's teaching but it's not your standard uh private academy in europe teaching it's more it's much more community based um i know it's it, it's a world away um we have we have three levels of we have absolute beginners we have progressors and we have advanced progressors but they're all if you were to place them on the CEFR, they would all be a technically A0 to A1. Um, yeah. Again, completely different world. Interesting you're talking about using them... Using is the wrong word. You were interesting you were talking about working with the local community because it reminds me of a presentation that you and I saw at um, TESOL Spain in Oviedo this year where the presenter was talking about exactly that. It's taking... Um, language students out of the classroom and into the community to do things outside, um, which is something that's less easy to do with younger students, but with adults, and, and perhaps the adults that you work with could do things like that. Oh yeah, I mean there is um, a, a complete, you know, you're, you're never going to take a bunch of 10 year olds around Oviedo City Centre, but you're more likely to be able to do that with a bunch of professionals in Belfast, that kind of thing. Um, so, for example, the organisation would have days out, that kind of thing, to sort of see around different places, um, just to sort of get to know the place, as well as um, find places that even locals like me don't know exist. <laughs> mm, I think that's, in a specific context, that's a really good thing to do with the learners. Um, but I think it's also a valuable thing to do, not necessarily the, the going out to the community, but just the fact that when you go and do a summer type project. The activities you do are, are different, um, but it's certainly out of the comfort zone, perhaps, and you can take back elements of that to 
to your everyday practice. Another thing I was thinking about to do with Sound Projects is the way that they gather together people from all over the world, because ELT is like that. I've got a team of 24 teachers and senior teachers. Um, it's a really nice mix of, of native and non-native uh, speakers as well, which is really cool. Um, and many of them come from, uh, well, they all come from either English-speaking or European countries, but they work and have worked all over the world. So I've got 25 people, including me, in that teaching room who all have very different experiences, who work in very different environments, bringing ideas together. And I just think that in itself is, is development. Yeah, it's pretty motivating to talk to people with different backgrounds, whereas 10 months of the year, mm. uh, most people are... It's, we're, we're all talking about the same thing, really, but then you get together with different ones, different cultures, different even different calendars. Mm. Um can be quite an interesting mix. Exactly. Um, so whilst <laughs> whilst it is work and it is a job, I'm I find this for me is an important development tool in the summer. Yeah. Um, so the, one of the reasons why we're talking about doing the summer CPD podcast was, uh, for example, summer courses, uh, which <clears throat> also include things like MOOCs. MOOCs being massive open online courses to anybody who might have done them before, either through uh, edX, Coursera, FutureLearn, that kind of thing. Chris, do you have any experience with them? Um, I do, but not particularly with teaching ones. <laughs> okay. Um, I followed some great... One good course that I would recommend to virtually anybody that I've done actually twice um, it's, called, it's on Coursera, it's called ModPo. And it's contemporary um, poetry, mostly it's American. Um, listeners already know I've got a literature background. Um, but it's really cool the way that they, they take these texts apart. And often, I love them, but you haven't got to follow everything to the letter. Um, and I've taken stuff away from that I've actually used in class as well. Nice. So although, although I followed it for my own interest and my own personal growth, um, I took stuff away from the classroom, mm -hmm. um, which is always nice. At the minute, I've signed up for a few literature ones that are on fu uh, Future Learn uh, that start at the end of the month. But I've the last few days I've been working on a linguistics one in Coursera, and I gotta say I'm not that impressed. Um, maybe it, maybe it's just the individual course. I don't know, but I haven't been too impressed with this course. Um, but we'll see. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, future. Why do you why, why do you like these online courses, Alan? Um, I don't think I like them yet. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Oh. They are, they are available. Is this your first experience with MOOCs? Uh, no, I've had experience in the past. I did, uh, I used Coursera a couple of years ago. Um, and I noticed FutureLearn has won the Eltons this year, the Teaching English Online a course written by someone who signed a textbook for you at TESOL, by the way. Um... <laughs> Uh, but the, uh, the the applied linguistics one, I haven't been convinced by it at all. I'm I'm not too impressed. Um, I've signed up for. I know the teaching. I know a lot of people who've said really good things about the teaching English online one on Future Learn. Um, I don't know when it's going to start again. It's just ended, so I'm not going to jump in at the end. But um, I'm doing a literature one with storytellers on Future Learn, so I'll see what that's like at the end of the month. Uh, see what the crack is if it's bit more useful than what I've seen so far? I think the thing with with MOOCs um, is that they can be hit and miss, but I think that's in the same way as any kind of training thing, and that's in it. It can be the same thing with podcasts like this one, or webinars that you sign into. Um, I think they have to speak to you at the moment that you're listening, yeah. or taking them, um, and what might be useful for one person might not be for another. Mm. And for me, it's kind of like audio, but it's not... Not so much like, pod, I don't do it with podcasts, but I do it with audiobooks. When I stop using it, like if I take a break or if I, you know, go make dinner, do something else, or go to the gym or whatever, I forget it's there. Um, and I've, I've tried audiobooks in the past and I've, I've literally forgot I was halfway through an audiobook. Uh, maybe, maybe it's just a different kind of learner. Mm, um, exactly. Suits some people, I, th I think, I prefer, I still prefer the old face-to-face. Uh, thing, whereas on a computer, nah, I'm not too sure. Mm. Well, I'm intrigued by this. Um, so, um, believe it or not, we actually planned these sessions and uh, these pod. No, we actually planned these podcasts. We are teachers after all. Everything's we planned. 
Um, Meticulously. Uh, <laughs> Massive. <Mass. laughs> um, yeah, it's not a post-it note. Right. Um, believe it or not, we actually planned these sessions. Right, good. No. Um, you've got here networking. And I'm intrigued by what you mean by this. Well, I don't know what networking means, but why is that there for the summer? I, I've, I've been sort of talking to a few of our teachers in Belfast about this. Um, uh. And recently, and I'm talking like a week, um, I set up, someone recommended I do it because the sort of social media has sort of warped and changed. Uh, where you'll find all the, you know, the cool hip people are on Instagram. Well, I'm not cool and or hip. Um, but I was recommended to set up a professional LinkedIn, professional teaching Twitter account and professional sort of teaching slightly more informal Facebook account. Um, and I've already found it extremely useful. Um, I, I hadn't had social media for literally years, um, probably the best part of 10 years. And then, um, I've actually been in contact with some interesting personalities and had some very interesting discussions in teaching Facebook groups, um, which I'm, I'm quite surprised by, actually. Um, didn't think it would be that effective and that useful, but uh, LinkedIn, I got a few people talking to me, teachers, Twitter, sort of hit and miss with if you're following the right people. Um, and there's like hashtags you can follow, like ELT chat, uh, which I think is quite cool. Um, but actually, teaching groups on Facebook were surprisingly useful. Um, Trinity, the British Council, and then uh, a few other breakaway ones from Trinity have been really, really good. Um, in, what, in what sense? What kind of thing? Like even a even, even, uh, perfect example would have been in what one of them the other day. I can't remember which one. Um, I was having a discussion with uh, a couple of people you know three different places around the world Belfast Singapore and somewhere in South America about like student motivation and how the how the three of us differ from what we do why we do it why we think it works why other things don't work you know it was a genuine professional discussion on Facebook of all things well apparently it can happen and that's really interesting because that is essentially what I've been talking about going on in my teaching prep room where you've got people from all over the world teaching all over the world coming mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. but you're doing it online um, rather than face to face mm -hmm. I've actually found it much more useful than MOOCs um, a hell of a lot more useful I think the short sharp bursts of things and other it's also organic put, yeah it is um, it's and it's more it's more, you. more more you dynamic discuss. as well more involving Whereas with the well, MOOCs, also, that stuff could have been recorded two years ago, and you're watching it again. Well, it's that, and it's the first word in MOOC. Massive. Mm, yeah. It's very impersonal. Mm. I mean, you're, it's all, almost there's so many people that you're following it on your own, alone. You're not really with a group. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and the next thing on our, on our very careful planning is reading, reading, reading. You missed, you missed a reading. <laughs> reading, reading, reading. Okay, yeah. reading. The fourth one, reading yeah. for. What yeah. are you reading? Uh, what I'm not reading is probably a shorter list right now. Um, quite a bit on quite a lot of things. Mm. Uh, I like, yeah, summer is my reading time, catching up on, uh, well, not just a bit of fiction, but um, quite a few uh, teaching books. Would you use summer for teaching book reading? Do you like well, to get time? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't really have time. Mm. Um, so I don't particularly use the summer to read teaching books, although I do use the summer to read. Um, and I think that in itself is not necessarily development, but the recharging that it gives, and maybe a reminder of why I like teaching English. Well, that's that, that's probably the best way to say it, actually. The recharging, yeah, I think that's it. Part, nail on the head there. Recharging by reading, yeah. Uh, my, fir my first day back, finishing finishing off my first book after a long time, I was like, oh, yeah, that, that felt good. You know? But also that, you know, that, that, that page you read when you're on the beach or on a plane or wherever it might be, you think, oh, yeah, the language here is fantastic. This is why I love language Yeah. Um, and why I love teaching it. Um, I think that in and of itself, so this is, we, um, we talked a little bit about 
whether you're going to do a summer CPD um, pod, and that's why I thought, what do we mean by the summer CPD? Um, because I think it's important we also recharge our batteries over the summer, and then we're ready in September. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you, um, you need that you need that sort of mental break. Um, and a bit of a remi- you know, and that reminder of why we do what we do. Yeah. Um, and I think they can come at any point. I had a moment um, with a student. I mean, I'm actually not teaching. I'm um, managing the academic side of the course that I'm working on, and I had a moment with a student last week where three days. Um, Anybody, anybody who has not worked in, in the UK will not be necessarily familiar with the obsession with lanyards. Um, <laughs> we've got a lanyard with our ID badge on it, um, which, they, which we weave to wear instead of thing. Three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is a little 12 year old uh, Spanish uh, boy, actually. Where's your lanyard? Oh, it's in my pocket. Put it around your neck. Fine, thank you very much. Moving on. And Thursday, I was just walking, walking along. I just gave this kid a thumbs up from about I don't know, 20 metres away. Um, and he gave me a thumbs up, saw me, and then grabbed the lanyard from around his neck and showed me that it was around, around his neck. Um, and it was just the most wonderful moment, so I thought, oh yeah, I'm not actually in the classroom, but you know, three days of telling a kid something and they've taken it on board and they're actually doing it. And he was delighted to show me that he you know, was following my instructions with that picture. <laughs> that one, I was like, ah, that's, ah, that's also why I do this. I mean, look, not the lanyard thing. <laughs> that's not a personal obsession. Um, but yeah, that you... You give a kid a message, you give a kid a message a couple of times, and then the kid does it. Yeah. Um, well, and this is to do with following rules, but that's the same thing as in the classroom. Those moments when you think, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why I do this. And whether that doing with language or seeing a, st- um, a student develop. Um, actually, one of my favourite things, favourite things in my summer role, which is to do with um, teacher development and going and observing teachers and chatting to them afterwards about the lesson. Um it's, it's, it's wonderful because you hear people, you hear professionals reflecting on their practice, um, and I, I think I think that's a really important aspect of what we do. Yeah. Well, I think I've seen a webinar in ages. I've seen webinars that have come back actually. Have you seen any webinars recently? Uh, I have actually. I think webinars um, is something I'm actually catching up with again because luckily enough a lot of places do stick them on YouTube afterwards. So this has been recorded 9th of July, tomorrow being the 10th of July there is a Trinity Transformative Teachers webinar for English for Academic purposes and then on the 11th of July there is a Facebook Live event which is entitled let's talk about CLIL, a Q&A session. Um, I've never done a Facebook live event before because I've never had a Facebook account. Um, so we'll see how that goes um, and see that what... That sounds particularly interesting actually. And it I does, kind yeah. Of that, kind of sad that I can't see it. So I'll be busy working so I should be hoping for lots of uh, notes that you might want to share. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that they save it and re-upload it in some way, although I've um, never seen them before. So it's, it's a learning experience for me too, just to see the logistics of it. Um, of course, there are plenty of recordings of, of uh, particularly plenaries from various conferences and yeah. things that you can see online. Um, I've been working my way slowly through the IATFL, um online IATFL, the British Council have hosted the, the um, recordings for that. Mm-hmm. Um, quality is pretty good uh, of the recordings and the quality of the talks, you can imagine, is IATFL. Yeah. Um, this was a particularly good um, one with John Gray. Um, which links to my research, but we were all, you were not, no, no, you and I didn't watch this, it was me with another one of my uh, friends who watched uh, a follow-up IATFL uh, webinar just a few weeks ago um, about future directions in ELT, um, and I believe, well, I know that the IATFL, uh, the IATFL discussion is on, on the website already, mm. and I believe that this, um, this follow-up will certainly be made available to IATFL members, um, definitely worth a watch. Speaking of which, while we're talking about plenary sessions, um, you would have missed it because it wasn't. It was on the Friday night, TESOL, Spain and Oviedo in the Calatrava. Uh. The uh, JJ Wilson's uh, plenary session is on freely available on YouTube to watch. And he tells the story of Los Damnificados uh, from a skyscraper in uh, Caracas. Um, so he gave he gave his plenary session on that, um, and how those people came together to make a community in this rundown skyscraper that was never finished. Um, that's currently my book of recommendation. I'm reading it right now, and it is like I'll have it finished probably by tomorrow morning. 
Um, it's it's one of those books I'm finding it very hard to put down. Really, really good book. And what other pushing things we recommend? You recommended a, uh, a book to read there. Well, I'm just going to re- recommend um, a te- textbook um, that actually Las Damas de Carlos is connected to. Has reminded me to say this: um, the Raise Up textbook. Oh um, yes, we've both got that now. Yeah. 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 Um, we'll and I've been to it singing its praises. We'll, we'll tweet yeah. a link to it, and we'll put a, we'll put a link to it in the show notes. Um, but um, I came across it doing my research, um, which is to do with the representation of uh, gender and sexuality in, in ELC materials. And uh, a friend of mine put me onto it. It's written by an Englishman who works in Brasilia, um, and I guess one of one of his colleagues, uh, a Brazilian. Um, it's not a course book to follow through. Um, it's eight mini units um, that take something that they consider to be underrepresented in the ELT course materials. So that, so that includes um, LGBTQ+, um, women uh, in positions of power, um, uh, refugees, migrants, um, lower classes, that sort of thing. Um, and there's a, there's a nice item plan um, that you can use. It's, I think, five pounds or five yeah. euros. Oh, yeah, five um, pounds with PayPal, yeah. For the PDF, five pounds of PayPal, get a PDF, um, and the money supports a, a shelter for LGBTQ youth in in Brazil. So well worth um, the investment to support that, but also to to get some nice lesson plans, which you can add a bit of diversity to your classroom. Before we wrap up this evening, we wanted to address um, reply to a tweet that we got from Taylor School in Oviedo. Your Catherine's experience sounds great. Our school doesn't have much staff turnover, so training isn't as key as if we had really qualified teachers, etc. But it would be good to get more info about what exactly made that school so good for teachers. As an academy owner, it's good to get a bit of insight on teacher perspectives from outside our school. And teachers who are new to our school, we do weekly planning meetings in the first month and then let them get on with it. Other meetings are not for planning and monitoring. So. Yeah, so this was a response to our part two of professionalism in the workplace where we talked about academies and what we expected um, or what we thought would be good. Um, as the both of us had worked in Catherine's um, and we did, basically the system was we had a Monday morning meeting every week, pretty much the whole year, so pretty much for three years, yeah if I remember correctly, and then there would be extra training sessions sometimes on a Thursday, but that was mainly the first term. Mainly the first term. Yeah, mainly the first term, yeah. Yeah. Um, So even though a lot of people think meetings are this horrible, nasty thing, um, and obviously letting teachers get on with it is obviously a good thing, um, I I think the one thing that stood out was the those in charge well from my point of view those in charge genuinely care um i've been in other academies around spain and as long as especially in regards to the kids as long as the parents are paying money they don't care um but there was genuine attachment to caring for the kids in catharas i think more than that i think yeah, letting kids get on with it, there's a lot to be said for not getting in the way of teachers, but I think what's also, what's positive about this way of doing things is that you get everybody in the same room, and we were talking at the beginning of this very podcast about bringing people together and sharing experience. Mm. It hasn't got, it doesn't need to be a planning meeting, and some places have planning meetings where all the staff are obliged to come together and plan together. I'm not entirely sure that that's a particularly useful way of um of managing staff, um, but at the same time, having a particular point where everyone comes together, um, not necessarily for important notes, although that can be part of it, but just, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, I'm working in a team. Yeah, team building. Um, or, I'm, or I'm working in a team, oh, and that person's also teaching that book, and that person's having a problem with page 16 as well, mm-hmm. perhaps I'll just go and have a chat with them about it, rather than... Uh, it, it opens the conversation. Yeah. But at the same, at the same time, even though if you're if you're in a room with ten ten sets of eyes staring at you, teaching can be an extremely lonely job if you don't have other like-minded people around you. And I don't mean Absolutely. the people in front of you, because it's it's a very public, it's a very exposed job. If you don't have others around you that care, um, that can be a very lonely experience. 
Absolutely. And, and, uh, and a staff it. meeting, <laughs> and it doesn't necessarily have to even be weekly, but a staff yeah. meeting on, on, a partic- on a regular basis yeah. that puts you in the same room and reminds you that you've got colleagues and you're not on your own. Yeah. Um, even if it's just I, to I talk about a point, even if it's just to talk about, even if it is literally just to talk about people doing the same thing, um, I think it's very simple, but I think a lot of places get it wrong. Um, I know, I know, I know. When you do interview, oh, we don't, we don't, we don't do meetings because we're cool and meetings are boring. Well, no, that's not the point. It's the team building. It depends what you think a meeting is for, as whether or not it's worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before. You can be sitting there and not talking, but you're still having an active part in the meeting because you're taking things from it. Yeah, um, so absolutely. We, we don't need to, we don't need to cover our tracks on that again. But I just I just I just think that for me that academy was out of all of the ones I've worked in, uh, five years in Spain that was the best out of the lot because mm. of what I got out of it as well. So say really thank you thank you for that input from from Taylor School. Yeah. And um, and that we continually welcome tweets. Um, particularly interested to know actually um, around this time if uh, listeners have got recommended webinars, have got recommended MOOCs that they think would be useful um, or any other things that they like to do in their summer which might be laying on a book, unwinding, recharging, <laughs> laying on a book <laughs> <laughs> or any other things that that's what I need to do <laughs> or any other things that they like to do in the summer um, to, to recharge and unwind even if that is laying on a beach with a book getting ready for September. Walking the dog. Thank you for listening to another episode of Fraser Lever Bozias. If you'd like to get in touch, you can tweet us at Fraser Lee V on Twitter. You can email us Fraser Lever Bozias at gmail.com. You can check out our show notes online at Fraser Lever Bozias podcast dot blogspot dot com. And please like, review and comment us on your podcast subscription service of choice. Goodbye. Goodbye.